Hey, uh, happy Friday, fellas. Today we're going to be doing some problem solving, so I've got an example for you. Um, I've chosen this example because it's, it's pretty common to the style of question that would appear on an assessment. Um, it's following on from our lesson on money yesterday, and the hardest thing you need to do here is just addition and subtraction. So nothing crazy, but I want to walk you through it because it's what we call a multi-step word problem which means there's more than one thing you need to do. And questions like this always trick people up because they don't read it properly or they only do half a step or they don't exactly answer the question. So in terms of following our problem solving strategies that we've spoken about, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is go and circle the numbers. And I'm just gonna highlight because my stylus isn't great. So I can see there are a bunch of different amounts that are listed here. And I'm just gonna go circle them. Um, in terms of looking for clues, I can see things like it says she buys a DVD, then she buys, so that's indicating she's buying a few different things, so maybe addition's going to come up. And in terms of what question's been asked of me, it says how much does she have after she goes shopping? So that's a good clue as to what my second step of my problem is. Um, I like doing that little thing, that little... Um, Strategy first, just looking for those things. I know I didn't do the clue strategy properly, but even just doing that puts you in a better chance to succeed in this style of question without making silly mistakes. So the question says, Cassie is at the shops with her friends. She buys a DVD for $10.99. Remember when we could go to the shops? They were good times. Uh, then she buys a new pair of earrings for $8.25. They're either cheap earrings or really expensive. I've never bought earrings. Lastly, she gets her mother a bouquet of flowers for $9.50. Bouquet? Bouquet? Eh. If she starts with $50, how much does she have after she goes shopping? So for me, I know, and I'm going to use my stylus, so bear with me if my handwriting's a bit rough. I know that step one is going to be figuring out how much she spent when she was at the shops. And to do that, first of all, I'm going to write it as a number sentence. I need to add the price of the DVD. I need to add the price of the earrings. And I need to add the price of the flowers. Now, some guys write this out and then they go equals and in their head they go, okay, 10 plus eight is 18, 18 and nine is. Please don't do that. Put your working out into an algorithm. We wanna work smarter, not harder. So let's work smart here. Um, I don't have an issue with adding up three numbers at the same time. If you're someone that you know you struggle with your addition and you need to work through slowly, my advice would be separate it, add two of the numbers first, then take that answer and add on the third one. But for me, I know that I can set up my place value pretty comfortably. $8.25 and $9.50. And I'm gonna put the addition sign to show that I know what I'm doing. Now, I'm doing 10.99 plus 8.25 plus 9.50. So I'm gonna start with my ones as always. Nine and five is 14, carry the one. Nine and two is 11, and five is 16, and the one up the top is 17, carry the one. I can place my decimal down here now. Um, nine plus eight is 17, plus one is 18, carry the one. One plus one is two. So I know in total, she spent $28.74. And heaps of guys will stop there and they'll go, yay, maths is done, sell five, I'm awesome. Those people are silly because they didn't read the rest of the question. Question says, if she starts with 50 bucks, how much does she have after she goes shopping? So I know that to find that, I'm gonna need to take my $50 that she started with and I'm going to need to subtract what she spent, which is $28.74. Now, in terms of turning that into an algorithm, I know $50 can be written as $50 and no cents, and I'm taking away the smaller number. I'm gonna put $28, my stylus is being weird, and 74 cents. And I've got as a nice algorithm, all my place values are neatly aligned, so I can do this now. Zero take away four you can't do. Zero take away seven you can't do. Zero take away eight you can't do. So we did learn a strategy for how we can do this back in term one. If we wanted to borrow from here, we can't. So we know that we can take this 500, I'm looking at this number, and we can just minus one off that. So we can turn it into 499. 
and then the one that I've borrowed off 500 becomes 10 ones. So now all of a sudden I'm doing 10 take away 4, which is 6, 9 take away 7, which is 2, 9 take away 8, which is 1, and 4 take away 2, which is 2. And following on from the clue strategy, it's always best to write your answer as a sentence. So I can write down, Cassie has $21.26 left after going shopping. Now I chose to type that rather than handwrite it, but you can see that I've shown my working out, I've done all steps required, and this video's gone five minutes, so it's taken me probably about four minutes to do that whole problem. I did it pretty slow, pretty carefully. We want you to do the same thing when you're working through word problems, please, fellas. Here's a nice example of a simple addition and subtraction multi-step word problem. Make sure you show your working out, make sure it's neat. All the best with your problem-solving lesson today.